Welcome to the Nightly News Podcast here at Central Penn College. We're here on the campus of the Somerdale campus here in uh, Enola, Pennsylvania, and we are so fortunate to have several guests here today. First, I'm going to turn it over to our, our guests for a brief introduction. You guys can introduce yourselves. Hello, I am Diane Porterfield. I am the library director here at Central Penn. And I am Emily Reed, the Instruction and Reference Librarian. We're also joined here by one of our uh, most pro prolific writers and uh, broadcasters here at the school, Norm Geary. And I just want to say thank you, Miss Emily and Miss Diane, for allowing the Media Club to allow Professor Miller and myself to inform the student body of upcoming events. You know, one of the things that we had talked about in some previous Media Club meetings is the fact that a lot of the students here on campus struggle finding things to do with their time. Many of them comment, and I'm sure that you've heard similar commentary, that, you know, they, they want to know more things going on here on campus. So in our last podcast, we had Adrienne, the uh, Student Activities Director, come in. She's going to start coming in monthly so that's really one of the things that we've been trying to do when it comes time to figure out who we're gonna have on the podcast what better way to try to get students more involved on campus than the project that's coming up that both of you are working on from the library's perspective for our student body so um, maybe we can start off by just saying a little bit about what's coming up with uh, the research exhibition exhibition day i want to make sure i get that right the research exhibition day so the research exhibition day will actually be on monday june 6th the event will be from three to five and basically students are going to present research that they have done in certain selected courses and they are going to present posters on this research and it's going to be a great event open to everybody from 3 to 5 p.m. hopefully we're hoping that we can leave the posters up the entire day not just from 3 to 5 but the actual event will be from 3 to 5 fantastic so I guess the first question is is where did you get the idea to do something like this so this was um, a collaborative idea between Judith Dutill and myself. We had been talking about various instructional strategies, ways that um, students could be more involved, especially with research um, and just creating a culture of scholarship here on campus. And one of the ways that came up was having a poster session. We talked about that for a little bit, then we kind of just let it lie. I came across an article in a Pennsylvania journal, a library journal, about a nearby campus, Penn State Wilkes Bar, who have a similar campus to us as far as what programs they offer, how many students they have, how many faculty they have. And last year they had an undergraduate research day and it sounded really amazing and since we had just talked about maybe having a poster <coughs> session here, what that could look like. I contacted Judith and we had a meeting and we brought Diane in and we decided this sounds like an amazing idea. Let's see if we can get the deans involved. After that, we contacted the deans, gave them a little overview. We would like to do a poster session. We would like your support. Um, if you think this is a good idea, we would like your assistance. And they were really receptive to the idea. So they gave us some names of instructors that have research components in their classes and said contact these teachers and see if they would like to participate. So we contacted those instructors um, and said this isn't mandatory. You can open it up to your students. You can decide for your class if they have to participate or if the students can decide if they want to participate. One thing that one incentive that we have for students is we're offering cash prizes. So we're going to have judges go around, judge the posters, judge the students' presentations, the answers they give, and the group that comes in first place will receive $100. The group that comes in second place will receive $75, and third place is $50. That's pretty incredible. I mean, what more incentive do the students need to try to get involved with this than cash? 
Um, but of course, yes. you know, and, and this is another one of the things that we'll be talking about throughout the podcast today is some of the other benefits of students potentially signing up for the competition. The second question that I had for you is, I, I am aware that you have a specific subject in mind when, when students are coming up with their project ideas. I was wondering if you could share what that subject is and where did you come up with the subject? We're operating with the theme of diversity this year and we basically chose diversity because it's a big topic. It's a theme actually with the faculty and the professional development here on campus for faculty and staff. So it just seemed like, and it's a very broad topic, so we figured that would be easy for people to, to find a research topic that fit that theme. So diversity it is. Excellent. <laughs> and, and just as a way, and then I'll come right back to you, Emily, just as a way to sort of show how wide of a theme that this really is. Um, the Media Club is going to be involved in this project. So when uh, we all first met with Emily and Diane in the library, we were thinking of, okay, what is something that the Media Club wants to do or maybe needs some research about? And uh, we've been very fortunate that we've been working in the Faculty Support Center thus far for all number five. We're on podcast five. So we've been working in here for uh, all five of the podcasts, but one of the things that we have had our, our sights set on is our own equipment for several different reasons, but that was what we are actually involving our project about. And the angle that we're taking is how diversity in podcasting has sort of changed the game for in, in broadcasting in general. Radio is nowhere near what it once was. In fact, it's sort of a shell of its former self, but podcasting has taken off. and because of the ability of it being relatively inexpensive, it may bring a whole lot more voices to the forefront that may not have otherwise had a voice to, to get out there to people. So that's sort of the angle that we're taking on it as far as diversity and how much diversity there is in podcasting right now. So that's just sort of the way that we're taking it. Have um, I'm kind of interested, and I think I'm going to turn, turn it over to Norm here. Norm, I understand that not only are you involved with the Media Club's entry, that also one of your classes is involved with this project. Could you shed a little bit more light on how, you know, how the project has been structured and how uh, your class is going to get involved? Uh, thank you, Professor Miller. You are correct. Uh, Professor Judith Dutel is going to have a public health campaign assignment for COM 450. And I'm um, glad you brought it up because Miss Emily is very involved in that particular program. Uh, she did a tutorial for the class showing the class how to go into EBSCO and also other websites. She also gave examples to the classmates on the proper way to format AP style. But the thing that I really liked is she basically made it interactive. She communicated with the students. She allowed the students to ask questions. So if there is anything they're not familiar with, uh, she answered those questions. And coming up this week, there's going to be postings of references. And Miss Emily's uh, heavily involved in assisting the students on doing the references for the assignment and also the final project which is doing the paper itself so we're really happy that uh, Miss Emily's taken the forefront in assisting uh, Professor Judith Dutil uh, but one of the questions I also wanted to ask was what resources are you offering to the students outside outside of those two uh, references that I just used so that's a great question. The primary source that students who are either interested in participating or planning to participate, the best source for them is going to be our online guide, which can be found at guides.centralpen.edu slash research exhibition. It's essentially a website that I've created and all of your questions can be answered somewhere on this website. You, there are different tabs you can see I need to register. How do I register my topic? I have a page about that. There's a page about a template. For example, there is a template uploaded on the website. You may want to look at it and decide, you know what, I want to use this template to create my poster. It could be really helpful. The template is not mandatory, but it is a really great guide uh, and a great starting place. There's information about judging, all the events that are coming up, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, um, as well as details for June 6th, where you need to be and when, and also about the prizes. We have a prizes page as well. 
So some of those events that are coming up, those are the other resources um, that I would like students to be aware of. The first one that's going to be coming up will be coming up on Monday, May 9th. It is a, an in-person work day. At 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, May 9th, you can come to ATEC 310, which is a computer lab. I will be there and you can do all your research um, and I am available for questions, help you find sources, maybe you don't know where to go to look for certain things, I can help with that. Just research work, um, very exciting and I will be there for that, for help. The next one coming up after that is going to be talking about using the template. So that one will be happening on Tuesday, May 17th at 7 p.m. This is a virtual workshop, so it will take place in my virtual office. I have a link to access that on the website, as well as details about what we'll cover. At this session, we'll be talking about, you've done your research, how do I use this in the template, do I want to use this in the template, and just talking about relating it to the template or using your own template. After that, actually the same day, but the next hour, Tuesday, May 17th at 8 o'clock p.m., I'm going to be talking about APA, how to cite your references, how to create your references list. And this one is open up to all students across campus. There are announcements going out in Student Central, Central Station, Facebook, and Twitter. And this will also be a virtual session in my virtual office. So students are encouraged to bring questions about APA, um, as well as any citations they have that they need help with. Um, they don't know how to cite a certain kind of source, ask away and I will help. After that, we have a session about infographics, how to use infographics on a poster. So if you have a poster and all it has are words, that's going to make for a pretty boring poster. And you want to have some really um, appealing visual aids and there are free tools available on the web. So I will be demonstrating two of those and showing you how you can create your own infographics. It's not too hard and then you'll be able to use that on your poster and it will look so much better. Then on Thursday, May 26th at 6 o'clock p.m. in the library or we might possibly move it um, watch for details on the website, will be another work session and that will be the poster building session. So by now you will have received your poster board which the library is ordering for you. You will have come and picked it up and you can bring it, bring all your research. We will have glue sticks um, and other supplies and you can work on creating your poster. Whether it's just you or a group, you can come to the library or if we move it, come to that location and there will be librarians available there as well. So then there are just two sessions left. Then the next one coming up would be um, talking about presentation skills. So for this session, Judith Dutill is going to talk about how you're going to want to prepare your speech for the judges, um, some tips about staying calm and relaxed, and also talking about what kinds of questions are the judges going to ask. That way you feel prepared and you won't be wondering, oh my goodness, what are the judges going to ask me? Am I prepared? If you come to this session, you will feel so much more prepared for the judges. And then the very last session is going to be about creating handouts. Handouts are a requirement to be eligible for the cash prizes. So that's just going to be a sheet of paper um, giving a summary of your research and how it relates to diversity, as well as all the references you used. And we're providing these for the judges as well as any other students or community members, um, administrators, teachers that would be interested in taking a copy of your handout to go. Um, so it's basically just your research poster condensed into one sheet of paper. From in-person sessions to virtual sessions to you ordering the poster board to you offering to help us put together the poster board to how to show us to use infographics I mean there are so many different resources that the library is providing for this session which to be perfectly honest with you is is in my mind one of the greatest things about this because not only are you taking the time to organize the event you're also taking the time to make sure that the students involved are going to be successful which again is just another testament to how wonderful our, our librarians are. <laughs> Norm, did you have one more question? 
I wanted to conclude by asking how might students use this to advance their career? So I see that this could be extremely helpful to students in two ways. First, this is going to give students a poster session experience. Poster sessions are not limited to colleges. This is something that happens at professional events nationwide in every discipline. Um, there's research being done in every single discipline imaginable. And then a lot of those research um, a lot of those disciplines offer conferences for professional development and poster sessions will often take place there. This is something that happens all over. Students are getting the experience of creating a poster and presenting it and they may find themselves later on in their life doing that exact same thing in their professional careers. The second way that I see this as being extremely beneficial is it's something that they can add to their resume. When a student is looking for a job, if they're deciding to apply to grad school, this is something that they can write on their resume, bring up in an interview, and say, I have practice um, just researching and contributing to a scholarly conversation. Um, so that would be the two ways that I see this as being really beneficial for students. All right, so uh, just to recap, the Research Exhibition Day will take place on Monday, June 6th from 3 to 5 p.m. All are welcome. Faculty, staff, students, and people from the community are all encouraged to come and see what types of research our students have been doing in regards to diversity. In the, in the meantime, you have several sessions. Not only will, uh, are all the sessions we just discussed, I'll also in the article that accompanies this piece, we'll put uh, the link to your website. So if you have any questions, you most certainly can contact Emily or Diane at your convenience and to try to make sure that you can make some of these sessions. And the Media Club personally looks forward to doing this because we are very excited about doing our project specifically. It's going to be something that we are going to use because with this research, we hope to make a decision after the event as to what podcast equipment we're going to buy. So we're actually going to be using the research that we are conducting for this assignment for our, our future equipment. So um, I just wanted to thank uh, all of you for stopping by today. So for Norm Geary, thank you very much. For Diane Porterfield, for Miss Emily Reed, I'm Paul Miller. So make sure that you, uh, one final question, and this is one thing that, that we didn't cover, is I just want to make sure, is there a deadline for registration? Yes, so students who are participating in uh, the research exhibition do need to register by May 20th. And we have that deadline in place so that we know how many poster boards we need to order. Now, if it's a group, um, putting together one poster, then you only need to submit one registration, which will include all the group members' names. And then um, individuals also register on their own um, for individual projects. Excellent. So uh, we have a deadline of May 20th to get registered and the event Monday, June 6th from 3 to 5 p.m. I just wanted to thank you two ladies very much for spending time with us here today on the Nightly News. Thank you. And we look forward to having you back in future terms. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you.